Come on, come on, imagine. Can we hear some noise here? Yeah. Wow, that is what I'm talking about. Abshen in the Macharon, Huya More, good morning, Tobela, Yenda. Look at the person next to you and tell them you look more slimmer than the last time I saw you and give them a high five and give God praise and take your seats. Thank you, Pastor Donovan and Shelley, for having me this morning. And Pastor Andre, thank you and the team for welcoming me. You know, I already feel at home. Actually, this is home for me. And uh, greetings from Hope Restoration Ministries together with my wife, Today, I'm here with my twins, my boys, and then stand up, boys, stand up, let them see you, how handsome you are, just like your dad. Okay, ladies, please a break, they are only 16, give them another three years or so, and then we can talk some stuff, you know. So, I'm so grateful to be here, and then this morning, and I pray we're going to have a wonderful time together. The beautiful thing is that um, um, I've got my two new books and then we're launching them today where at Imagine you guys we are blessed actually I was blessed with new shoes and uh, now you've got a new book strength I'm gonna talk um, my sermon will come from these two books today one of them is strength when you can't take it anymore the second book is uh, church the sleeping giant so most of the points will be coming from these two books. I pray that you're going to be blessed and they'll be available immediately after the service. But let's go to the business of the day because uh, we are here, you know, to challenge you and to encourage you, especially in the days that we are living in. If you are writing down, I will be talking to you under this topic. Go in the strength you have. Go in the strength you have. I need to say it was in 1994 when I responded to the call of God upon my life. I was young then and I was also naive and uh, laid back. I could not communicate that well. Those of you who know my story is that my English was poor because I was taught how to read at the age of 15. For 10 years of my life, I was in the streets and uh, living like uh, street kids and the grace of God found me at the age of 15 and the woman and then embraced me and took me back to school. Now I need to say that I grew up in a poverty stricken environment. My family was the poorest of them all. You know, those of you who grew up in the township, you would have an idea of what I'm talking about. But the funny part here is that the guys on the left were poor and the guys on the right were also poor. But they would look at me and say, I am poor. Now, if somebody who is poor and he looks at you and say you are poor, you must know that you are really poor. <laughs> that is where I'm coming from. But in the midst of all that, I desired to be a pastor. I desired to be a pastor, and my family, they were not happy about that, that you are from a poor family, and all that you can think of is to be a pastor, because I wanted to better the lives of people. And then my pastor, who was my spiritual father, you know, when he realized that I had a call of God, and he gave me a gift, he gave me a gift of a Bible in 1994. And I've got a picture of that Bible. 1994, he presented this to me as a gift. But he said these words to me in Zulu. He said, Simply means, go in the strength you have. Go in the strength you have. Amazingly, that my pastor did not address me based on my present circumstances at that moment. But he, he addressed me based on my capabilities and the gifting he saw in the inside of me. Isn't that amazing? That was a special gift. He looked at me. I did not look good at that time, but he saw beyond what I was going through or what was happening in the inside of me. And then he, he prophesied the future in my life. And look where I'm standing today with the same strength that he saw. He said, go in that strength. Now, these words are found in the book of Judges chapter 6. If you read the Bible, those of you, you know these are the words, you know, pertaining the story 
of Gideon. Now we find this story in the book of Judges chapter 6 from verse 11 to verse 16. The Bible says the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak tree in Oprah. That belonged to Joash, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. If you follow the story, it is because, you know, there was this battle among the Midianites and the Israelites. All the time when they harvest, the Midianites will come in and take the harvest from the, from the Israelites. So Gideon was hiding just to keep the little that he had at that time so that it was not taken away from him. Now verse, verse 12 says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, this is what he said. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Isn't that amazing? That here is somebody, he's hiding. Here is somebody so scared. But God does not address him based on where he is or based on what he was feeling at that time. He comes to him, he says, the Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. I can imagine he was asking myself, are you talking to me or is there somebody next to me? But the Lord was saying, I'm referring to you. You know, but said, this is Gideon, but said, he replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? You know, I think this is a question that many of us are asking even today. If the Lord is with me, why did my husband left me? If the Lord is with me, why are my children going through what they are going through? If the Lord is with us as a nation, why are we suffering so much? Why are we experiencing all that we are experiencing? It's a question that is asked by many of us even this morning. You are seated here, you are asking yourself a question. Why am I going through what I am going through if Pastor Chris says the Lord is with me. Remember, the Lord does not address you based on where you are, but he's looking at you based on the future, based on your potential, based on what you're going to achieve in the near future. Now, when you look at verse 14, the, the Bible says, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you but Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I'll be with you and I'll be, I'll strike down all the Midianites together. And this represents all of us. I am from a poor family. I am not educated. I never had those privileges. My clan is the weakest. This is me, this is that, that and that. And the Lord is not interested in that because after all, it was not about you. It is about him. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to write these nuggets down because this is the flesh of my sermon. If you have to write notes or if you want to capture them, this is the moment where you need to do, you know, capturing because it's the meat of my sermon. It's what I want you to take home or your nuggets if I can use that word. Look at the first one. Look at the first one. You know, God doesn't address you based on your present circumstances, but on your future abilities. That is how God operates. Please remember that. When you face challenges, remember this. This is what you need to grab even today. And then number two, God calls us without explanation nor detailed checklist. It's our role to discover his will and learn to trust him along the journey. When God calls you, he's not gonna give you an explanation and give you the details and say, this is what's going to happen. Next year, this is what's going to happen. In two years' time, you're going to be betrayed. Or this is No, he does not do that. It is your role and the responsibility to learn along the way, to discover this God, how he operates. But the most important thing, number three, courage is not having the strength to go on. It is going on even when you don't have the strength to do so. Am I speaking to somebody? I know there is somebody here. You, you, you say, I don't have courage. I, no, 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 no. You don't have to feel courageous to move on. But courage is when you are so weak, 
but you're still doing it anyway. That is courage. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? Here is another one. In life, in life you have to go by what you know, not by what you feel. You go by what you know. It's not the size of what you are up against that matters, but what the creator has put in you. Please don't lose me here. I am going somewhere. It's not the size of what you are up against that matters, but what the creator has put in you. When you feel like you can't take it anymore, always remember, always remember, always remember, you are stronger than you think. I'm talking to you, lady. I'm talking to you, man. I'm talking to you, sir. You are stronger than you think. When God, when God created you, listen to me. When God created you and designed you, he looked into account or consideration of everything you would need for today and the future. That is how God has created you. Just like the SUV. Let me just show you one of my favorite SUV. My goodness me. Look at that thing. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. You know, when I was just driving this thing, the, the salesman said this. He said, said, this thing is beautiful. You know, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. But listen to me. He says, this car, it is not only designed for on-road. It's also designed for off-roads. Oh, my goodness me. Show them that picture. <laughs> Can I put it to somebody this morning? That you are not just a pretty face, my dear. They might look at you and think you are just a pretty face. You are not just a pretty face, only designed for on road. I am here to declare to somebody that you are designed for on road and also for off road. It's in your design. It's in the inside of you. The devil doesn't know. That is why I have learned when the devil is throwing punches unto me, I don't run away. I said, bring it on, devil. Bring it on. Bring it on. Because the more you bring it on, the more you unleash what is in the inside of me. They will never know who you are until you face rough surfaces. You are built to stand. You are built to stand strong amidst challenges. You are graced to stand tall on high heights, empowered to conquer mountains. You, you are equipped with strength. You are equipped to absorb pressure and weight. Can I say to somebody, some of you here I know, you are driving the SUVs. What an abuse. Because you have never taken that SUV You better finish the statement. <laughs> that is what we have become. We don't know what we are capable of. And listen to me as I said to you, you are stronger than you think. You are not what your biological genetics says you are. Listen to me. In the inside of you, in the inside of you, there is power. You know, you are much more than your past mistakes and failures. It's not the size of what you are up against that matters. What matters is what God the creator has put in you. Always go by what you know. Always go by what you know. Did you hear what I said? Listen to me, if you don't know, you will even bargain for what you already have because you don't know. You will beg for things that you already have. The salesman said to me, and you don't have to add any money. This thing, it is equipped with everything that you need. If it's a raining season, there are what we call wipers. They just come automatically. They just do that. You don't have to press anywhere because this machine comes with everything. When you face the mountain, it will tell you that now you are on the off-road stuff. You need to change some stuff. Am I speaking to somebody here? I'm saying to you, you are stronger than you think. 
you are stronger than you think. You have been empowered, you know, by God in the inside of you. There is so much strength. Come on, give God praise. You are stronger than you think. Sometimes we look at our biological genetics and we say, I'm not that strong. I am not that big. The color of my skin, you know, does that and that and that and that. It's not about your background. It's not about the color of your skin. Let me tell you, if you don't believe in miracles, the miracle right now is standing before you. I mean, even the teachers, they never thought that I would be able to communicate as I am communicating now. The way my brains were damaged by drugs at the early stage. You know, I lost my speech. I could not read properly. I would spend moments just to read a sentence, you know, because I was damaged in my brain. But look what the Lord has done today. Look what the Lord has done today. How I wish I can look at those people who said, I will never speak again and say, Buyala, come here. Look what the Lord has done. The question that we need to ask this morning is why God wants us to go in the strength that we have. Because he is God. He is capable of adding more. He is God who is capable of, you know, doing extraordinary things. But why he said to Gideon, with the little strength that you have, go and I will do exploits with the little strength that you have. Number one, you know, little is much when God is in it. Never forget that. Little is much when God is in it. Gideon says in verse 15 of chapter 6, My Lord, he replied, But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. Now God says it is enough. It is enough. I don't need 32,000 men to come and save the nation because remember, when he said, go and fight, and then 32,000 men came. But listen what God says in chapter 7 and verse 7 of the book of Judges. The Lord said, told Gideon, with these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send others home. You know, sometimes we want people to be next to us. You want your crowd. And God says, you will never become what I want you to become. Can I say to you, sometimes God will remove people from us. And it will be painful. We think, you know, they've left us. Listen, my dear, God wants to do something with your life. But sometimes he cannot do what he wants to do because you are too crowded. He says, Gideon, just get rid of this. I want you as you are so that I can do something about your life. I've said in the, in the first service, when God removes people in your life, my dear, don't cry. God is up to something. Let them go. Let them go. Because God is up to something. Sometimes God is protecting you from those people. You are not even aware that God is protecting you. My, here is Gideon. He is surrounded by 32,000 people. Yet, 22,000 is fearful. Yet they are with him. They are saying we are with you, yet they are fearful. Why God wants us to go in the strength that we have? Number two, God doesn't call the qualified he qualifies the called. That is a beautiful thing about God. And listen to me, you need to understand this. That this is how God operates. When you feel qualified in the presence of the Lord, you are not yet ready to be used by God. God does not operate like that. Moses, when he said, I cannot speak, I am not a good speaker, I am a starter, God said, you are a good candidate. Because I want to make sure that at the end of the day, it is not about you. It is about me. But God says, it is my responsibility to qualify you. It is my responsibility to equip you. Verse 16 says, the Lord said to him, I will be with you and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. 
Can you see what God is saying? He says, I will empower you even when you fight. You will fight as if you are fighting against one man. The very same, you know, battle that you are facing, it's not going to be that huge because I'll be empowering you. And it's so beautiful when God does that. Look at the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 24. Chapter 5, verse 24, what it says. It says, faithful and absolutely trustworthy is he who is calling you. Calling you to himself for your salvation. And he will do it. He will fulfill his call by making you holy. Simply means to set apart. Guiding you. Watching over you. And protecting you as his own. You see, you become the project of God. When he calls you, you he says, you are my project. I will make sure that I polish you. And the way I'm going to polish you, it's not going to be the same like the world, you know, polishes his people. He says, I'm going to do it my way. Joseph, I will do it my way. It is me who has called you and I will equip you and I will prepare you for the future. So I said, number one, little is much when God is in it. Number two, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Number three, God doesn't want to share his glory with man. You know why he wants you to go in that strength? Because he doesn't want to share his glory with man. Verse two of chapter seven, let's prove that. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Let Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying my own hand has saved me. Can you see what God is saying? He says these 33, 32,000 men are too much. If you go and find these Midianites, at the end of the day, you're going to say, it was my power. It was my strength. It was my ability. And God says to him, just tell these guys that those who are fearful, let them go back to their family. And guess what? 22,000 people. They say, eh, hey, hey. oh, let's go, let's go. 22,000, they say, we are going back home. Yet this guy thought, I've got an army. Yet 22,000 people were fearful. Can I say this to somebody? Don't ever trust the crowds that is next to you than God. You might think people are with you, yet they are not with you. They are so fearful. It is better to have less with God than to have many without God. And God said, tell them to go back. And he was left with 12,000, if I'm not mistaken. But God said, it is still too much. They will take glory for themselves. And why God was saying, go with that little strength, it takes us to point number four. Because the battle, it is not yours. It is not yours, Gideon. This battle, it is not yours. Why do you want to own what is not yours? In fact, the battle has already been won. I feel like the Lord was saying to him, the battle has already been won. All that you need to do is to show up and take your rightful position. I'm not going to mention any soccer team. You know, there are teams <laughs> that will step into the soccer field. Already they know they have won the battle. They've won the match because they've paid the referee. They've paid the lies man. They've paid for everything. And in all that they've told them, just step in, okay? Just show up. It is not you who's going to win this match. Can you use that for your own benefit? That everything has been set. All that you need to do is to show up. Wake up in the morning, my dear. Wake up, put those heels, oh my Jesus. 
put those heels and go to that interview. Go to that interview. I know there'll be six men sitting there interviewing one woman. And then after the interview, you look at them and say, gentlemen, thank you for this time. I want to tell you that I'm the right person to consider. If you don't consider me, it's going to be a big loss, you know, for this company. But thank you for this time. After that, you take your, your catwalk, my dear, knowing that everything has been paid off. You had to show up. Show up with the strength that is in the inside of you. With the strength that is in the inside of you. Because the battle, it is not yours. You do your part. Play your part. Make sure the presentation is excellent. That is your strength that you have. And the rest, it is up to God. And then he will make a show off at the end of the day. Let me give you a scripture on that one. Verse 9 to verse 11. It simplifies this, this point. It says, you know, because now God says to Gideon, if you want to know, if you want to see that the battle, it is mine, go to the camp. Just go, you and somebody, just go and listen what is happening already about these people. Now in verse Nine, it says, that night the Lord said, get up, go down into the Midianites' camp, for I have given you victory over them. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura. Listen to what the Midianites are saying, and you will be greatly encouraged. Then you will be eager to attack. Now when they reach the camp, you know what is happening, right in the camp. These guys, they already saw a dream of defeat. They saw, you know, a, a, a loaf of a bread coming in. It's like, you know, it destroys the camp. They begin to speak among themselves and say, surely this should be, you know, the weapon. This should be Gideon and his people, you know, and then we are defeated. And here is Gideon. He's listening to his enemy talking about him that we are defeated. Gideon is coming to defeat us. Can I declare to somebody that the very same thing that is threatening you is so scared about you. The very same people you are scared of facing, they are trembling about you. Here you are, you are worried about the person on the other side. The devil himself, he says, ooh, I, I, I'm so scared about this. I'm so scared about them. They must never attack because it is over with us. Church of Jesus, Church of Jesus, it is time for us to arise. It is time for us to take our rightful position. Our rightful position. That is why, Pastor Andrew, I wrote this book. Church the Sleeping Giant. There are people who are benefiting because we are fast asleep. Corruption is rising because we are fast asleep. They want us to be quiet because they know how powerful we are. They know the leaders of integrity that we have in the church. They know women of integrity that we have in the church. They don't want them to step into this space and make a difference. They say, you sit there. Shut up. Be a good boy. Be a good girl. Be a happy clappy. And then we are so comfortable. We have become a happy clappy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yet corruption is rising all over. And then we are quiet. Not with me. Not with the church of Jesus. I am here to encourage you. Step in. The Lord is on your side. With God you are a majority. Fear not child of God. Go out there and do your work with excellence. After that you say my God. Thank you for this. Represent him in an excellent way. Look at the person next to you and say, the battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. Number five. Why God wants us to go in the strength that we have. God wants to demonstrate his power in our weakness. He wants to show us that he is sovereign. He's a God who owns everything. In verse 19, it says, Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. Just after they had changed the guard, they blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpet and smashed the jars, grasping the torches 
in their left hands. Watch this, in their left hands. They, they, they hold the torches, which is their vision, on their left hand, okay? They were to blow their, their trumpet and on their right hand. That is where they were holding their trumpet. A sword for the Lord and the sword for Gideon. And the Lord gave them victory. Two things. Keep your vision on your left hand. Even if it's a weak hand, even if you are feeling weak, don't lose your vision. Even if you are under attack, you feel your body cannot handle it. You keep your vision alive. But with your right hand, you blow the trumpet. You blow the trumpet. You speak victory over your life. You keep a song. You have a song at night because it's the song that will keep you going in the midst of storm. Your vision and your song, it is the strength to your spirit. Let me conclude with these words this morning. Let me conclude. Go with the strength that you have. Whatever, listen to me, whatever is lacking, God can fill it. Whatever is broken, God can fix it. Whatever is lost, God can find it. Whatever is dead, God can resurrect it. Whatever is weak, God can strengthen it. I don't know what is going through your life this morning. But I want to say it with God, he can fix it. You are stronger than what you think, my dear. Doesn't matter what you have experienced in the past. Doesn't matter the pain, doesn't matter the disappointment. But the Lord has instructed me to speak to somebody. To say, my dear, rise wherever you are. Shoulder up. Walk with pride. Because Jehovah is your God. The one who began a good work in you, he will make sure he accomplished what he has started in you. For you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't be discouraged now. With the strength that is in the inside of you, keep on walking like Johnny Walker. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. God is on your side. As I take my seat, it would be a very big mistake for me not to mention this. On the 29th of May, we are heading into the elections. Somebody put it very well. He said, this elections is an IQ test for South Africans. It's an IQ test for South Africans. So go out there and show us that you are smart or you are dumb. God bless you. Come on, church. Thank you so much, Pastor Chris. Thank you. What an amazing message. Go in the strength that you have. I have the point the pastor Chris made that, that you just have to show up. God has done everything. And so today you need to know that wherever you are at in your life, whatever you are facing, whatever you are going through, He's a God that wants to be in a personal relationship with you. And He has done everything that is required for you to enter into that relationship. He gave His Son on our behalf, that paid the price so that we can enter into relationship and earn the beautiful gift of everlasting life. And all you have to do is show up. You know what the great thing is? You have shown up. You're here today. You're in the right place, at the right time, at the right moment. God knew that you would be here. This might be your moment for making the decision in your life. In a couple of minutes, I'm, I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I'm, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you want to be part of a prayer. But I want to make this a personal moment for each of us individually. And so I'm going to ask if everybody can please bow their heads. Today you need to know that God loves you so much. God has a call on your life. He has a plan and a purpose for you. One that is greater than what you can accomplish on your own. That's why you need Him in your life. He wants to be in a relationship with you. 
And that's why, as we said, he's done everything that is required. Jesus Christ has given his life instead of yours so that you can be in relationship with God. What you need to do is make a decision today, a decision between life and death. It's that big a decision. It determines your future. It determines your relationship with God. It determines your journey with him. And the decision is around this, that you choose to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. In other words, what he did on the cross, you recognize that it's better enough to pay for your, on your behalf. That there's nothing more that you need to add. And so you have the opportunity to make that choice today. Maybe you have never given your life to him. Maybe you've never invited him in. Maybe you've never chosen to become a Christ follower. And today you want to do that. You are here. You've showed up. And you want to make that decision. Maybe that's you. Or maybe you have made that decision in your life. And, and you want to live closer to God. Or you know that stuff has happened that has distracted you from the plan and purpose he has. And, and you want to come back today. You want to declare to him that you are a follower of Christ Jesus. If on either one of those you want to be part of the prayer, we're going to pray. On three, would you just raise your hand? One. You have to know today that this is a moment that is created for you. And as we said, you are not here by accident. Two, today is the day that could bring change in your life, a whole new future, and everything is set because God has already accomplished it. Three, quickly, raise your hands. I can see hands going up. Don't let this moment go past. This is the moment. Not too young or not too old to make a decision for Christ. It's always an exciting day when we come to Him. Hands going up all over. Last time, as I look over the room, is there anybody else that wants to be part of this prayer that says, God, here I am. I've showed up. Today I make a decision for you. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for what you've done for us through your Son on the cross. Jesus, we give our lives to you. We want to become followers of you. Thank you for paying the price for me on the cross of Calvary. Thank you that I can enter into a relationship with the Father. Today, I choose to turn from the way that I've been going and completely follow you, your wisdom, your principles above everything else. Today I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. We praise you and we thank you for this whole new relationship that we can enter into. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful decision that you've made. We are so excited for that decision. So many people that have made that decision. And we want to invite you, if that was you today on either of those two, if you waved at us, there's a team as just as you leave the room on the left-hand side, there's a space there called Next Steps. There's a team that would love to chat to you, give you more information about the decision you made, or maybe help you with the next step. What is it that happens from here on in your personal life, in your church life, whatever it is, maybe they can help you uh, just to make that next step and, and get onto this journey of following Christ wholeheartedly. You guys good? You're ready for this week? You're going to go in the strength that you have? Let's stand and give Pastor Chris one more great roarus. Thank you for an amazing message that he shared for us. Have a good week. Influence the people around you. Prepare your heart to hear from God at all times.